Hello, I'd like to welcome you to these edited highlights of the recent launch of our how-to guide on linking sovereign debt to climate and nature outcomes. We've developed it for debt managers and environment policy makers across the developing world. We're going to hear an introduction to the guide from two of its authors from IIED and the Potomac Group, and then inputs from experts from the World Bank, developing country governments and the UN system on the timeliness and usefulness of this guide. We hope you find it useful and we hope you take a look at the guide as well. Thank you. So the first step here is creating the task force and defining the objectives. Uh, the task force we consider would be uh, involving the Ministry of Finance, possibly the Ministry of Planning, if that exists in the respective country, uh, crucially the Ministry of Environment as well, and possibly some other key ministries, perhaps the Ministry of Agriculture or the Ministry of Energy. And they would need to appoint focal points who would lead the process. They would review the country's profile and circumstances, the uh, debt status, uh, the policy objectives, and then set objectives for the transaction that are specific, credible, and ambitious. Once you have that kind of uh, working group, uh, expert working group in, in government, it's really time then to kind of turn uh, to external partners uh, and access the capacity, capacity building uh, services as well as advice that's available. But if we use this KPI approach, both for the bonds, it's possible also to see a potential the KPI linked uh, swaps. So again, both would be uh, upscaled uh, through the use of KPIs and, and shift to a general purpose modality. So uh, in terms of engaging others in this selection and prioritization of the KPIs, having uh, other government departments, having civil society, local government, parliamentarians, but also, and perhaps most importantly, affected communities on the front line of both climate change and nature loss, because too often we don't listen to the people who are most affected, so they need to be engaged in the process. Step five is really the design of the transactions financing aspects. And so, um, as Paul said, we just have, we've, we've kind of chosen the instrument or chosen the kind of general transaction. And it can be, as, as he mentioned, kind of a combination almost uh, that would, that's also possible. Uh, then you start to design your KPIs and then you really have to look at the financing aspects. Step six uh, is again, engaging with those market participants. As, as we mentioned earlier, um, you, you at this stage of the transaction, once you kind of have settled in on, on really what you're what you're hoping to do, you want to really start getting that feedback from market participants. So the last step, finally, um, is the execution of the deal, and the implementation of any transaction is really going to differ on on the nature of the actual transaction itself. So. Um, Again, whether it's going to be a debt for uh, nature uh, conversion uh, swap program, or if it's a, a new money instrument, the execution will be um, have its own very specific steps. We need to get together the instruments that the investors need and the incentives that the issuers need to really, um, really address these systemic issues. Um, and that's why I think the, the, the work that, that Paul and Jill and we're doing at the bank and the UNDP are doing around these climate debt instruments, I think is actually could be really catalytic and very important. We as the financial markets need to reward the countries that are making ambitious targets and are actually then, then rewarding them with capital and support and with financing. And we've been looking at these sustainable linked bonds as one way of doing that. Um, they are growing, as you know, many of you in the in the corporate markets, these things are exploding. How do we take them to a sovereign market? We have ambition, we have ambition and also we have uh, the idea uh, for what and when and also for where we want to go. Uh, so that's mean uh, with this policy, with this idea and to show COVID as a count uh, with a lot of ambition. Uh, we take, let me say, a uh, green economy and also blue economy as a uh, setters to be to be invested in COVID. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, COVID change, change its way. And also COVID make uh, the government without space. Let me say not government, but COVID without space because we don't have fiscal space 
to invest. Um, the debt swap can be a solution for that. I have the, 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 the good fortune of sitting at the G20 finance track for the UN. So I've seen how the DSSI has evolved. I've seen how the common framework has evolved. And we know there's baby steps in between that the implementation side is what matters the most. And that's where all of us can make a difference, I think, on the implementation. So I'm excited about this agenda. I think that there's a lot that we can do together. From my perspective, the KPI um, angle is really to sort of mainstream uh, climate resilience uh, indicators also at the national level. I mean, if we all, if, if a few of you are already familiar with the way that, for example, the, the IMF and the World Bank works with countries uh, in relation to budget support, uh, the IMF usually identifies um, uh, performance indicators that are obviously more fiscal related, uh, but they, and they, they uh, have, depending on the country that they're working with, uh, they have a degree of confidence in those indicators. Uh, but what we would, what, what I would see is really interesting about the idea of KPIs is that you have uh, an understanding at the country level uh, of, of how to measure your, your progress towards this indicator. So definitely the timing is appropriate uh, to launch the guide and uh, 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 most of the work uh, that ESCO has been doing on this, uh, the guide already, particularly taking into account the the, the longer term frame and uh, connecting it to the to the uh, to the to the outcomes. So the KPI definitely provides an unique opportunity, a unique mechanism to to address that, and that's where I think the guide makes a unique effort uh, to connect both the new debt as well as the debt swap. I hope you've enjoyed the discussion today. If you'd like to learn more about the work do download the guide, the link's available here. Thank you and goodbye.